Holy Ghost within. I love that man, that man from Galilee. the blood I know it was the blood I know it was the blood save me one day when I was lost Jesus died upon the cross and I know it was the blood save me I know it was the blood I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, save me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood, save me. I'm gonna stay right under the blood. I'm gonna stay right under the blood. I'm gonna stay right under the blood of my Lord, where the devil can do me no harm. No harm, no harm, no harm. No harm, no harm. No harm, no harm. I'm gonna stay right under the blood of my Lord Where the devil can do me no harm I'm gonna stay right under the blood I'm gonna stay right under the blood I'm gonna stay right under the blood of my Lord Where the devil can do me no harm No harm, no harm, no harm No harm, no harm, no harm That washes white as snow. Thank God, thank God for the cleansing blood. Thank God for the cleansing blood. Thank God for the cleansing blood that washes. White as snow. Thank God, thank God for the cleansing blood. Thank God for the cleansing blood. Thank God for the cleansing blood 
that washes white as snow. I am redeemed and I'm bought with a price for Jesus has changed my whole life. And if anybody asks you just who I am, I want you to tell them that I am. For Jesus has changed my whole life And if anybody asks you just who I am I want you to tell them that I am Adelia, I don't want to take away this service. I'm trying so hard. But I Am Redeemed is one of my songs because I know where I came from. And when I sing that, Sister Delia, I stand and I stick my chest out because I know Amen. where I came from and I know where I am now and I know how I got there. So if you would stand to your feet, and you would help me sing this song tonight if you know that you have been redeemed you stand and you sing that thing with authority amen amen, amen. sing that with some authority well i am redeemed and i'm bought with a prize for jesus has changed my whole life oh, and if anybody asks you just who I am I want you to tell them that I am redeemed let's sing that one more time come on oh, For Jesus has changed my whole life And if anybody asks you just who I am I want you to tell them that I am I want you to tell them that I am redeemed. Amen. Amen. Some, some stuff to shout about tonight. Being redeemed is a beautiful, wonderful thing. When you think about all of the heavy loads, all the guilt, all the issues and the stuff of your past, right. and when you think of how God in his great power of love cast them off, right. when we bow and when we humbled ourselves at the foot of the cross, we can truly say we have been set free. All of the heaven burdens were laid at the foot of the cross because we are redeemed. And the atoning blood of the Lamb keeps us. The abiding love and grace of God, it sustains us. It is a beautiful...
beautiful, beautiful place to be when we can say we are redeemed. It doesn't matter our academic accolades. It does not matter our positions, our titles. What matters? I am redeemed. So if we are redeemed in the house of the Lord tonight, can we say those that are redeemed proudly, boldly, confidently, we can say I am redeemed. Let the devil hear that saying tonight in the house of the Lord. Because in the house of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is the one in authority. So we will say we are redeemed and we praise the Lord for redemptive power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you think about how excited the world gets when a song is being played, they have no worries about who is listening to what. They are busy glorifying Satan and feeling good, doing their moves in the house of the Lord got way more freedom and liberty because we have got the cleansing blood of Jesus that sets us free. It gets into our soul and when it shoot up in our bones, hallelujah, we got shouting business to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Church, let's say hallelujah. Our God is great to be praised. the devil. We spend more time talking about problems and issues than praising the Lord. May the Lord forgive us these things and may he bring us in to check where we check ourselves. And every time something is happening, we're not going to blame the devil. No. We're going to say, Lord, we praise you. We thank you that you brought us to this place. Now you do your priestly work so you can receive praise and glory and honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This place is a place of restoration, isn't it? It's a place of healing. It is a place where the spirit of the Lord abounds. This house, his house, this is holy ground. And we tonight have the awesome privilege of being on holy ground, better than the red carpet, that in an Oscar award, we are on holy ground in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, and we have the open invitation to speak to him tonight. Tonight we can come through prayer and we can cast all, not one or two. He didn't give a limit and say, I only want to hear one problem from you tonight. All of your cares you cast on me because I care for you. And as we prepare for this time of prayer, we thank the Lord. He is here. And his ears are listening. He's feeling our pain, our frustrations. He feels everything that we feel because he bore it all on the cross for us. So let's talk to him tonight. Let's get into that secret place. Father, child, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we do have our standing prayer request. We pray for our shut-ins. We pray for those that are sick. Tonight, we want to also be praying for our revival services. We've got one service left, and we do want to see a mighty move of the Lord. So let us just focus our time around some of that and um, Pastor Gums will be leading us in that prayer right after we have our prayer chorus and I invite you to stand for that please just a closer walk with me
Let's believe God tonight in his presence as we call upon his name. Father, we bless you. We thank you for who you are. There's none but you. There's none beside you. There's none like you. And so we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. We are so glad that in your presence, in a world full of pain and a world full of wounds, a world full of brokenness, you are the healer. Every broken heart finds healing in you. And we ask that in this house tonight, your blessed presence would overflow. You would move in our lives, move in our hearts, that those who are present would experience the delivering grace of Jesus Christ. That those who are viewing would experience that for the deep needs of their hearts, the things that they don't want to touch because they are too painful, even tonight may they experience that the healer is here. And what man cannot do and what friends cannot do, you are more than able to do. So minister your grace and your power and your presence. And Jesus, we thank you for what you've done so far in this week, but we need more than that. We ask that the fire of the Holy Ghost would fall. We ask that the healing virtue of Jesus, that tonight there'll be somebody who will touch the hem of your garment and experience healing and deliverance. This we ask in your precious name. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We invite our ushers to please come forward as we prepare to receive our evening tithes and offering. We're reminded of the scripture as they're coming that says, Behold, I am the Lord of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Praise the Lord. We'll ask um, Sister Delia if she would please just bless the offering for us. Lord, we thank you for this night that we can come back again into your presence and into your house, Lord, to worship you and to give you all the praise and all the glory. And I, Lord, I ask that you would just bless the givers, Lord, of the offering. And I pray that you would bless the offering to the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables strain? Will your anchor drift or firm remain? We have an anchor that keeps the souls steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, rounded firm. In the Savior's love, it is safely moored. Will the storm withstand? For tis well secured by the Savior's hand. Though the tempest rage and the wild winds blow, not an our bark or flow or we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and gathering night 
the city of gold, our harbor bright. We shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore with the storms all past forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to the rock which rocking and you felt you had that anchor to hold on you know what the song was saying right we can testify to that the goodness of the Lord in the midst of a storm kept us hallelujah praise the Lord just want to remind us of our service again tomorrow night and we will be starting at 7 I think tomorrow night is going to have a focus on youth on youth and we do ask that you would please try to get as many of our young out for this service. And we want to be very prayerful that the anointing of the Lord will be upon Pastor Gums tonight and tomorrow night as he ministers on those two occasions. We'll also be asking for and receiving a love offering tomorrow night as well for Pastor Gums. So I just want to remind you of those two things. I will at Oh, <laughs> I looked around and everybody had disappeared. I'm wondering what's happening. Because at this time, we would be preparing to sing our theme song, Send the Fire. And, um, but I think Pastor Gums have a song tonight that he wants to do. Will you still be doing the theme song as well? No? Okay, so this is in replacement of the theme song. Let's just give Pastor Guns a nice round as he ministers. And we do ask that the Lord will give him added strength, a fresh word, and pour into his spirit a new. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Yes, thank you so much, Sister Sue, and the worship team for leading us in the worship here tonight. We thank God for his presence, amen, and we're glad that you are gathered here together in the presence of the Lord. Uh, I'm going to have to change gear. Um, we, we were... We are wanting to preach to broken persons, and we will do that. Um, we were, I was hoping to see um, that. I know that at times we invite persons, and they promise to come, and, and they don't show up, and I'm sure that quite a few of you did that. And the message I have is one that speaks to persons who are going through so much, and especially speaks to the whole issue of fathers. And, and if you look at the root of it, a lot of what we go through stems from the absence of fathers in our lives and the deep pain that is there. And also the effects that, that the whole issue of parenting has on our lives. And by the leading of the Spirit, as the Lord allows, I believe we'll do that tomorrow instead and so it's a bit unusual to have to change again but i'm just following what i believe the holy spirit is saying amen amen and so i encourage you to invite as many young people tomorrow to the service invite them and uh get them to come so spend some time hitting the hitting the street or hitting the pavement 
and believe God for a move of his spirit tomorrow night and certainly right now we are believing God to speak to our hearts. So we're going to just sing after I read the scripture, I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, and at that time the worship team can come and help, but in the gospel of Luke chapter 7, so we won't have any PowerPoint on the screen tonight, they had it ready, the one that was sent, but uh, sometimes a flight has to change in media, amen? And so the gospel of Luke chapter 7, 36 to 50, and it's read thus, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, bought, brought an alabaster box of, an, of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees, when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, hmm, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she's a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. And Jesus said, There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly, or totally forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Say that together. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sin also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Let it go. Touch somebody who's close and say, let it go. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can these afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee every hour in joy or pain. 
let's stand together. I need the every hour in joy of me. Come quickly and abide. Come quickly and abide. All night is I If you need him, lift your hand and say, every hour. Every hour. I need thee, Lord. I don't just want you, but I need you. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Sing that verse again. I need thee every hour. I need thee every hour. Enjoy our pain. Enjoy our pain. Come quickly and abide. Come quickly and abide. Our life is vain. I need the all I need. Father, we need you tonight. We need you tonight. Come by your Lord. Amen. Someone's praying, Lord. Come by ya. Come by here. Lord, tonight somebody, some people need to just let it go. All of the years of pain, all of the years of brokenness. Even in your house, may they let it go and experience the delivering hand of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus, the love of Jesus. And may they leave a different way. Maybe they came, Lord, with chains dragging on their feet. Maybe they came with darkness filling their lives. But tonight we speak that the chains are broken. Tonight we speak that the darkness is shattered by the light. Tonight for every bondage we speak Jesus. Lord, for every dungeon we speak Jesus. Lord, for every impossibility we speak Jesus. For those in the sanctuary we speak Jesus. For those viewing online, for those who are wrapped in their pain, wrapped in their darkness those who are burdened by bitterness those who are haunted by a sense of failure and doom tonight may they let it go yes. and to all we speak jesus as we give you glory as we give you honor hallelujah i need the every hour enjoy your pain enjoy Come quickly and abide. Come quickly and Our life is vain. Our life is vain. I need the all I need the Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 There's a song that says, that's what the altar is for. You don't have to carry 
those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness. There's a love that's true. Jesus is waiting. And he's waiting here for you. Come quickly now before they close the door. That's what this altar is for. Amen. And so to all gathered here tonight, I say in the name of Jesus, let it go. Let it go. Forget the gossip and see the truth. Here is a woman who enters a house. She doesn't enter because it's a rich house. It is rich. The sofa, the living room set is that kind of set. Is that what they call the Elizabeth style where is that nice chair with a wooden uh, curves on top? Yes, some of you got that at home. Where you can just press the remote and the AC comes on. I mean, I don't mean a, a remote. You can press your phone and the AC comes on. You can say from uh, America and turn on your TV or turn on your security lights or turn on anything. It was probably a house like that. It was a real bling bling house. Had servants all around, had the best curtains. But she didn't go into the house because of its status in society. She went because Jesus was there. She knew who owned the house, a Pharisee. A man who believed he was above everybody else. She knew who else were in the house, other Pharisees. And other women who know how to gossip about bad women. But she had a burden and she decided that she would forget the gossip. And she would see the truth. All people knew and cared about is that she was a sinner. She had her faults. She had her issues. She was a failure. She was a nobody. She was poor. She, she was from a low class. Maybe, maybe, maybe she was even a, what you would call a, a bastard child where, uh, you know, and she grew up being teased. I don't know. But if you are going to let it go, you got to forget the gossip. Are you with me? There are people who will talk about you. There are those who will criticize you. There are those who will remember every single thing about your past, what you did and what you did not do. And some of those people may, may even be those in the church. Here is Jesus and where Jesus is, there should be righteousness. But there were Pharisees around who didn't really care about Jesus. They only cared, here comes this woman. Look at she. What is she doing in here? There were individuals who were driven away. They need a change. But sometimes when we're talking to them, all we can talk to them is about their problems, their faults. What did you do this for? You should have known better. You were raised in a better house and you've messed up your life. And, uh, and, 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 and sometimes after you share things with somebody confidentially, you hear it other places. Are you with me? Because somebody who you spoke to in confidence tells somebody else in confidence and they tell the other person in confidence until confidentially your name is all over the place. And sometimes when we desire to let it go, the devil brings back what people are saying about us. But if you have pain in your life, you got to go beyond the gossip and see the truth. This woman, she looked beyond the gossip and she saw the truth. She saw her wounds. She saw her brokenness. She saw her loneliness. She saw her hunger to be understood. And let me say this here. I, 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 I have lived long enough to know that when you see people acting reckless lives, acting like they don't care, acting, those people have been damaged. Are you listening to me? I saw a girl. I saw her on the road. And she's a schoolgirl, maybe 14, 15, maybe 16, and she's dressed in a shawl dress that stops maybe by her navel, and then there's all of this belly out. 
and then some short top. And she's walking in that suggestive way. Now the instinctive thought is like, you see, by the girls of this generation, they will come to nothing. Look at her. No class, no self-respect. She looks so nasty. She, she looks like a tramp. Shame on her. Where is her mother? But I, I heard another story about her. She came to class, my wife's class, with a big bump on her forehead. Remember, she asked a big swollen bump. How did that happen? Her mother was looking at her and staring at her. And then she took the iron and just hit her in her face. The, the iron hit her in her forehead and said, why? Because you look like your father. And she said, that wasn't the only time before she did it with a pressure cooker. So we all will say that girl has nothing. She has no class. But we don't see beyond that this is a broken girl. She's a broken spirit. Are you listening to me? She's a broken soul. And we have to begin to look beyond people's faults and see their need. And so this woman, I'm saying to us tonight, if you've got pain in your life, go beyond what people say and go beyond all of the inconveniences. As she entered that room, she heard the hiss and the whispers and something said, you better leave this place. You better leave. Go back into the darkness. Go back into the shadows. But I'm saying when you are in the presence of Jesus Christ, stay there. When you enter the presence of Jesus, don't let no demon and no devil in hell drag you from his presence. Stay there like the woman with the issue of blood. She says, I will not. She kept on pressing and pressing because she says, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And so I am saying to anybody here tonight, whatever you come with, a burden you have, go beyond what's around you and begin to focus on the fact that you are broken and it's time to let go of the pain and the anger and the bitterness and the fear and that sense of despair that life will always be like this. Let it go. Can you say let it go? Her brokenness her brokenness, her brokenness. I spoke with a young lady. She wanted to see me. And she struggled with lesbianism. And that is becoming increasingly common today. And so parents, be careful what your children are watching. We have a generation that goes to bed at 3 in the morning, 3 o'clock. They are up on TikTok. And talk tick. They're on TikTok until the clock ticks that it is time to go to school. And then they come to school like zombies. They can't stay awake. You got to think of all kind of creative ways to keep them up. And she says she's struggling with lesbianism. And she shared and asked because when somebody tells me about your present, I want to know about your past. Because we did not just come here. Something has been happening in our lives that has led us into paths that are divergent, that are far away from the truth of God's word. And she shared. And among the things she shared, she says, Pastor Want, my mother's boyfriend. I was about eight or nine, and he was raping me on the bed. And the door opened, and my mother came in, and she looked. And then she backed out quietly and she closed the door. I'm talking about stuff that's happening even now as we speak. It's happening in Cayman. There were women who so want a man in their lives. They don't care if their girl child is being molested. As long as a man is yet to pay their bills, to buy their fingernails. Are you with me? To buy those six inch long eyelashes. Are you there? To buy here the warm barn, which is even walking with here all the way down their knees. How they get it, they bought it. As long as he could put food on the table, pay bills, help them, then their girl children are sacrificial victims. 
And sadly enough, some of those same ladies were treated the same way. You see, the wound dead become the wound does. Are you there? So when you see individuals abusing others, in many cases, they will abuse themselves. And all because they failed to let it go. There comes a point in time where we have to understand, I cannot continue the vicious cycle. Maybe my father abused me. Maybe my mother abused me. Maybe I'm from a generation where there are curses from generation to generation. But there comes a time that I must let it go. I've got to say all to Jesus, I surrender. I can't take the pain anymore. And so, forget the gossip and see the truth. Let it go. Is there a yawning in your heart tonight? There's a loneliness that is there. You've heard me speak about my friend born in a poor, in a place of poverty, a dirt floor. Dirt floor. Was taken to another island to live and he grew up and he became successful had money, I mean money can done, and he would travel. He went to Africa with, who's the man who owns Virgin Atlantic? What's his name? What's his name again? The owner of Virgin Atlantic, Richard Branson, worked with him. I mean, and when a man has money, he has women, and he would have women, he would go to other places and just um, rent hotel, I mean, stay in hotels room with the women, but he said, Pastor Gums, when I, I did not want to be alone, when I was alone, I would have the music on playing loud because when there was no song and I was alone, I would hear a voice saying, look at you. You are nothing. You are nobody. Yeah, he had an expensive rings, and more, but the voice said, you are nothing. Yeah, he was driving expensive vehicles. When he drove, everybody was watching because the man had wheels. The man had a bad ride. He had what you would call the crib. When you know on, 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 on those TV stations, they say, you know, check my crib, man. You know, that's my piano over there, man. I just, I just pick up that piano, boy. It's, you know, uh, it just costs about $250,000, man, yeah. You know, you see, uh, this is my, this is, I, I just retrofitted the kitchen and put in brand new cabinets. And they're about, um, you know, about $1.5 million. That's my crib over there. And everybody said, wow. He had all the crib he could have. But deep inside, he was a lonely man. And every time he was alone, the voice said, you are nobody, you are nothing. And one night he came to service where I was preaching and he was convicted. He held on to the altar when we gave the altar call because he refused to let it go. But when he left the service, God did not let go of him. And God kept on speaking to him and he was under conviction and he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And that was about 20 years ago and he's still serving Jesus today. Why? Because he discovered there is healing in the presence of Jesus Christ. He discovered what he was longing for, what money could not give, and what woman could not give, and what fame could not give. All of that was found in Jesus Christ. So tonight I'm saying to anybody here whose heart is broken, let it go. He was filled and surrounded by people, but he was lonely. Do you know it's possible to be in a crowd and still be lonely? Yeah, it is. It is. It is possible to have everything and still be broken. Still be broken. Not letting it go. You heard of the Miss, what was she? She was the Miss something for her state, not Miss America. I think she became Miss America. Her mother was Miss Carolina for the state. And now she became Miss America. She then became an attorney. And she jumped from the thought she, she was so she was beautiful, she was highly educated, but she jumped from the 19th floor of an apartment in Manhattan. It happened about two years ago. Remember that? Because you know why she jumped? Because she says, I'm thorning, I'm, I will, I'm 29, I will soon be 30. And I'm angry because people will not see me as beautiful anymore. Why did she jump? 
She jumped because she had everything the world said is beautiful and important. But she did not have Jesus Christ. And she found there was nothing worth living for. And a beautiful woman, woman with the perfect fingers, the perfect eyelashes, the perfect body shape, the perfect complexion, the perfect education, the perfect fame, but a broken heart and an empty soul. She jumped and she died. Why? She did not let it go. She did not say, all to Jesus, I surrender, Lord. I give you my pain, my emptiness, my brokenness. She has no father in her life. The father is you. We'll talk about that tomorrow as the Lord permits. And I'm saying to people here today, to men and women, young and old, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, and your heart is broken by pain, you are in the presence of the healer. His name is Jesus Christ. And I'm saying, let it go. Can the church say, let it go? Her yearning to be loved and understood. What people are longing for. You know there are people, there are children who know one thing for sure. Mommy doesn't understand me. When I start to talk, mommy, when, when mommy hear that I was walking at school with a boy, and she wait for me to come home and she light me up and begin to cuss me and tell me, I better don't come in here with no swell belly and I, I better don't be a tramp and stop being a tramp. And when I open my mouth, mommy says, shut up. I talking. Children must be seen and not heard. And that girl knows one thing. Mommy doesn't understand me. And some of you probably grew up where you know for sure the people in your house didn't understand you. There are people who can be growing up in, at home and they feel so alone because they are not loved, they are not understood. You could be in a marriage and you come to realize, my wife doesn't understand me. My husband doesn't understand. There is a yearning in the human heart to be understood because you can't love somebody properly if you don't understand them. Are you with me? Because everybody has experience where you are, where your back is itching you and you ask someone to scratch your back because unless you are those types of persons who can push your hand all the way up to touch the back of your head and bring it all the way over, those are the people who are double jointed, you know? But most of us are not like that. And there is a place in your back where you cannot reach and you ask somebody, come scratch my back for me. And they're scratching and you say, not there, over some more. And they're scratching, no, 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 up a bit some more. No, 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 a little higher. Yeah, 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 okay, to, to the left. Ah, yes. Listen, they could scratch for two hours. If they aren't scratching the right spot, it doesn't make one bit of difference. And they can't get vexed and say, listen, i doing the scratching. No, it's not about you. You must understand where my pain is and touch me where I hurt. But you first got to understand me. And we live in a world where people don't care to understand. And there are people who are lonely. They, have, they may have money or they may have nothing, but they are lonely because no one has taken the time to understand them. And they do not feel loved and they do not feel respected. And I'm saying that tonight, wherever you are, if you are driven by loneliness, you may laugh. In fact, they say that the, com the people who are the saddest are the people who make people laugh. What do you call them? Comedians. You Google it. Not now. Keep your phone down in the name of Jesus. But you Google comedians and Google are comedians and happy people. And you will find that in many instances, the people who love to make people laugh are the saddest people. And they bury their pain by comedy and laughter. They don't want to face the pain. They don't want to face. That's why people take tablets in the night to sleep. Because they just can't deal with it. And they cannot sleep because when they close their eyes, their lies flash in front of their faces. But I'm saying to you, wherever you are, on whatever spectrum you are, let it go. Perhaps what had decided this woman to take this step of boldly seeking out the master were words that she heard him speak where he said, come unto me. All ye 
who was <laughs> weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. You must understand, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law, they were from a different cut of the cloth. They had no interest in people. They were interested in people respecting them. But a Pharisee, you know why Jesus said, Jesus said some radical language, you know, he called the Pharisees, you are a bunch of hypocrites. The church has gotten the idea that Jesus is only a gentle lamb. He is the lamb of God, but he's also a lion. You can touch the lamb and you can hug the lamb, but don't mess with the lion. And the Bible says, in so many words, the lion of Judah shall break every chain. So they mess with the lion and he said, you Pharisees, nobody told you this because they're afraid of you. But I know your heart. You are a bunch of whited sepulchers, full of rotten bones. You look pretty on the outside, but inside and on the inside, you are a stench. And the Pharisees said, who does he think he is talking to? They were embarrassed. You know, Jesus said that for many reasons. One of the reasons is this. When a Pharisee was about to give money, he would make sure he goes to a crowded street where it's traffic jam. People passing, donkeys passing, everybody busy. And he would have a man close by him. So when the crowd is busy, he would have the man to ring a bell. And everybody look to see where the bell is. And when everybody's watching, the Pharisee would take out his money and give and say, God bless you. And everybody says, oh, that's a righteous Pharisee. He's righteous. And Jesus said, you're a bunch of hypocrites. You are stench. He says, when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is giving. When you are praying, when the Pharisees were fasting, you know what they did? They put white flour or white powder on their face. And they walk around sad. Hello, Mr. Pharisee. They say, oh, he's fasting. He's a holy man. Jesus said he's no holy man. He's a hypocrite. You are blind leaders of the blind. Are you with me? You, are, you, you go over land and sea to make somebody a proselyte, to make them a Jew. And when you're finished, you make him twice the son of hell because you make him one of yourselves. Jesus was a radical preacher, you know. If Jesus were here today, he'd be touching stuff that a lot of pastors don't touch. A lot of politically correct pastors don't touch. That's why they say the only place for Jesus is on the cross. And I'm saying this, I don't want to go away from a point, but if we are people of God, there comes a point in time where we got to speak the truth. We got to speak words of life. But the point is the same Pharisees who are so full of themselves, they never spoke words of compassion. So when Jesus is in the temple and there's a man who is withered, there's a man who's crippled, they had no use for that man. But Jesus healed him and then they say, oh, that's wrong. You heal him on the Sabbath day. Jesus said, people, let me ask you something. If your donkey, if your ox fall in the dish on a Sabbath day, will you leave him there and say, poor donkey, you're coming back tomorrow? Because the Sabbath, he said, no, no, no. You jokers would go and you would pull him out. Isn't this man more important than a donkey? So in the presence of Jesus, she felt something she never felt around the Pharisees. Around them, she only felt scorn and judgment and mockery and contempt. But in the presence of Jesus, she felt compassion. She heard him say, come unto me, all ye who are, lay, who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and ye shall find rest to your souls. And she says, never a man speak like this man. I got to go where Jesus is. Even if he is surrounded by the Pharisees, I've got to get into his presence. And she entered the house. She knew she'd be criticized. She knew she'd be ostracized. But she wasn't there for them. She was yet to get a hold of Jesus Christ. And I'm saying tonight, wherever you are, if you know what pain and brokenness is, you're in the presence of Jesus. And it's time to let it go. 
because there's a healer in the house and his name is the son of God. And no matter how damaged you are, no matter how hopeless it seems, there is deliverance in the presence of Jesus Christ. Is there a witness? Can somebody lift your hand and say, I know that. Can somebody testify and say, I've been there. I've been to the potter's house. His hands of mercy molded me. He set me forth when he was finished so that all the world could see that he can mend a broken vessel. It matters not what shape it's in. Yeah, I've been to the potter's house. I've been made over again. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you know the sand set with me, tossed about by life's battles, all my hopes were sinking fast. The sinful life that I was living, I knew for sure it could not last. Then I went down to the potter's house. <laughs> and and, and placed my vessel into his hands on his wheel of grace and mercy. He made me over again. Yes, I've been to the potter's house. His hand of mercy molded me. He set me forth when he was finished that all the world could see. Look at this drunkard. He's not drunk anymore. Look at this drug addict. He doesn't do drugs anymore. Look at this girl who was from man to man. She She's not there anymore because she's met the man of Galilee. That he can mend a broken vessel. A person who whenever you look in the mirror, you are ashamed of who you saw. But now when you look in the mirror, you say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. I've been to the river. I've been baptized. I've been washing the blood of the Lamb. I've been changed from the creature that I once was and redeemed is what I am. I've been changed. Hallelujah. I'm a newborn. All my life has been rearranged. What a difference it made when the Lord came and stayed in my life. Oh yes, I've been changed. So I'm saying tonight, wherever you are and whatever is your level of brokenness, whatever it is that has broken you, the powers of sin, the time is now to let it go. Can the church say in the name of Jesus, let it go. Yes, when God is moving, there are those who still don't get it. They had their personal agenda. As we said in verse 39, they had their own personal agenda, the Pharisees. So there in Luke, when Jesus spoke into her situation and her own pain in chapter 7, it says this, verse 39, Now when the Pharisees which had hidden, bidden him saw it, he spake, the Pharisee spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she's a sinner. <laughs> oh, man, let me tell you something. People will not understand what God is doing in your life because they don't know the operations of the Holy Ghost. You see, when a guest entered such a house, three things were always done. The host placed his hand on the guest's shoulder and gave him the kiss of peace. That was a mark of respect, which was never omitted in the case of a distinguished rabbi. But this man did not kiss Jesus. The roads were only dust tracks and shoes were just slippers. So when you went into somebody's house, it was an act of courtesy and hospitality that you would leave your shoes by the door and they would bring a basin of water and place your feet in the basin and wash your feet and then they would dry your feet. It was an act of hospitality. Say you are respected, you are understood, you are appreciated, you are being served. They did not do that to Jesus. None of this was done. And then they would have a pinch of sweet-smelling incense that was burning. A drop of attar of roses, that's a fragrance, was placed on the guest's head. These things were things that good manners demanded. But the Pharisee did not one of those things. But this woman, can you say this woman? 
she let it go. <laughs> yes, she felt the judgment. Every step she took closer to Jesus, she felt the anger and the scorn and the contempt. Every name, prostitute, hooker, nobody, a street woman. As she got closer, it got louder, but she didn't come for them. She came for Jesus. Every step she took brought her closer to her deliverance. And at the feet of Jesus, for the first time she felt love. For the first time when she looked into his eyes, she saw compassion. When she looked into his eyes, she had seen many men before. And when they looked at her, they, she just saw lust in their eyes. She saw just plans and how to use her. She, she knew that they were seeing her as an opportunity. But this man named Jesus Christ, when she looked into his eyes, she saw compassion. She saw understanding. For the first time she felt, somebody understands me. He is not pulling away from me. When I reach out to touch his foot, he does not push away from me. But he looks at me with love and without planning. She burst into tears and she wept at the feet of Jesus. Her tears were the water that washed his feet and she took her hair and began to dry his feet and in that moment the angels in heaven they stopped singing and they looked at worship and Gabriel said now that is worship that is true worship and I'm saying when you're in the presence of Jesus Christ you gotta let it go all of your plans. Maybe she just planned to talk to him, but she was so overwhelmed by his love. She just couldn't hold it back anymore, and she burst into tears. Her voice must have filled the whole room. She didn't care what they were saying. She just knew she could not leave this way. She had to let it go. And she gave all of her pain to Jesus. Her tears were stories of her pain. Her tears were stories of her shame. Her tears were stories of her abuse. Her tears were saying, Jesus, when I was only eight years old, somebody molested me. They took my virginity. And Jesus was saying without speaking, I understand my child. I understand my child. She let all of the pain go. Yes, Jesus, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. I've broken up marriages. I've slept with married men. And Jesus not pushed her away. He says, my child, you are forgiven. In his presence, she let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in this moment, in this house tonight, I am saying it's time to let it go. Let all of your heart and your pain go. Don't care what people say about you. There is healing. There's deliverance. There's forgiveness in the presence of Jesus Christ. Amen. And sometimes we don't get it because we are trying to be a very um, controlled person. Like the woman with the alabaster box. You think when she came into Jesus' presence, she planned to break that box? That box of perfume was a year's salary. That's a year's salary. What is the minimum wage in Cayman? How much a day? How much a month? What's the minimum wage? How much? Six dollars an hour. Eight dollars an hour. So a month, what would a person who makes eight dollars an hour get? Any, mathem any mathematician in the house? Okay, whatever figure you got in your head, that's fine. Sorry? Yeah, a figure at the end of the month. How much does a person walk home with at the end of the month? Anybody? Okay, but listen. Take, multiply that by 12 months. That is how much that alabaster box of ointment perfume costs. I am sure when she got close to Jesus, when she... Got, Walked with it, she planned to pour some on Jesus' feet. But when you're in the presence of Jesus, you can't give some. You can't give most. You got to give all. Are you with me? When you're in the presence of Jesus and you feel his love and his power and his righteousness and discover that he understands you and he loves you unconditionally. When you understand you're in the presence of the Son of Almighty God, everything that you planned just goes up in flames and you just give everything. The Bible says she didn't only pour most, but she broke the box and she poured it all on Jesus' feet. 
And tonight, if you want to experience God, you got to give him all. Stand on your feet with me at this moment. Even here, I am asking individuals, if you have come to church with a burden, with a brokenness in your spirit, if you've been going from year to year, maybe the church feels as though you're okay. But deep inside in your spirit, you know things are not the way it ought to be. Maybe your life is going in the wrong direction. You're with the wrong crowd. You are going in the wrong places. You are doing the wrong things that you are totally against what you were taught. And now your life is trapped. Whatever it is, I am saying in the presence of Jesus Christ, let it go. Let it go. We're going to ask for persons who want to pray. In your life, the Holy Ghost has spoken. In this moment, the Lord is speaking to your heart and he's saying, this is your chance. This is your hour to bring your pain to me. To bring your wounds and your brokenness. To bring your heart. To know that somebody understands you. There are individuals who, if you want to know what they think, sometimes those who are the quietest, you want to know what they're thinking, find their, dia their diaries. Some people don't keep diaries, but there are those who do, and they write out what they truly feel. I want to say this, whether or not you have a diary, Jesus knows all about you. Whether or not people understand you around you, Jesus does. Whether you've been saved for one day or for 20 or 40 years, there are things about you others don't know, but Jesus knows and he understands. And I'm saying to die in the presence of the Lord to let it go. This song is a beautiful song. Some of you may have heard it already. And it says there is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burden that you carry. For in this sanctuary, God is here. Those of you who know it can sing along. But in this moment, even as we pray, I'm going to ask for those of you, if you need Jesus Christ to come and do something for you, let it go. Whatever burden you carry, maybe there was a sin in your life, maybe you have not accepted Jesus Christ. But come and lay down those burdens now. Come and let it go. Almighty God, we ask that you will do your work tonight. That there will be that woman, that man, that boy, that girl, that individual who will say, yes, Lord. I sense your presence and I'm going to let it go. In Jesus' name. Anybody wants to join us, we're glad for those who are praying. Maybe you were saved. These ladies here, they're born again. But you are, maybe they're praying for somebody else or they're dealing with some matters that they need God to walk in their lives. I'm asking you wherever you are to just come and say, Lord, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to give it all. I'm not going to fight it anymore. Maybe you are holding unforgiveness towards somebody. You are bitter towards your father or your mother. Maybe you are bitter towards somebody who cheated you and took your share of the business, maybe you're bitter over promises made to you and you haven't gotten over, over that damage and the hurt and you are bitter and you are unforgiving. Whatever it is, it's eating you up. Let it go. So right now in this house, will you come? Lay down the burdens that you have carried. Anybody else wants to join us, just come and say, Lord, I'm letting it go. Will you come? Amen. Hallelujah. Just come. Yes, he's here tonight. Anybody else wants to come and join us? <clears throat> Just say yes to Jesus to break the yoke and live the heavy burden. Yes, he is here. Hallelujah. He is here. He is here. Sing the song. He is here to heal the hopeless heart and bless the broken. Come and lay down the burdens that you carry. I believe that God is speaking to others. 
There were some of you who know that you need to let it go, but you're fighting. Just let it go tonight. Don't leave here the way you came. God is here. Say, he is here. Oh, he is here. He is here. To break the yoke and lift the heavy burden. I know he's here. Yes, he is here. He is here. To heal the hopeless heart and bless the broken. Come and lay down. Anybody else wants to pray tonight? Maybe you want to just talk to somebody beside you who you have a burden for and say, I will go with you to the altar. It's time to let it go. If we can just go over that song from the beginning again, there is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burden that you carry. For in this sanctuary, God is here. Anybody else wants to come? We're just tarrying because I know God has spoken. And you don't need to leave the way you came anymore. Will you come? Anybody else who wants to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we are green in this place. We are believing you right now. We are trusting you right now to move by the power of your Holy Spirit. You are moving even here in this moment. May there be a yes. May somebody say yes, Lord. As we trust you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah.
empty and broken I came back to him a vessel unworthy so scarred from sin but he did not despair he started over again and I bless the day he didn't throw the clay away over and over he molds me and makes me into his likeness he fashions the clay a vessel of honor I am today all because Jesus did he didn't throw the clay away he is the potter I am the clay and molded in his image he wants me to stay oh but when I when I stumble when I fall again he just picks up those pieces he doesn't throw the clay away over and over he molds me and makes me into his likeness he fashions the clay a vessel of honor I am today all because Jesus did he didn't throw the clay away over and over he molds me and makes me into his likeness he fashions the clay a vessel of honor I am today all because Jesus did and he didn't throw the clay He molds me and makes me into his likeness. He fashions the clay, a vessel of honor. I am today all because Jesus did he didn't throw the clay away empty and broken 
I came back to him, a vessel unworthy, so scarred with sin. But he did not despair, started over again. And I bless, oh, I bless the day He didn't throw the clay away Over and over He molds me and makes me into His likeness Transforming again A vessel of honor I am today All because Jesus did He didn't throw the clay Transforming me again A vessel of honor I am today All because Jesus did He didn't throw the clay a vessel of honor I am today All because He did Jesus didn't throw this clay We don't, as Jacob said, I will not let go until you bless me. Hallelujah. God is walking. God is moving. And he is not finished with us. And we must not be satisfied and say, this is good. God says, I have much more. This, this is just the beginning. And so let's persevere and push through. We look forward to tomorrow night, the Lord's willing. Invite as many persons as you can, including young people. It's a youth emphasis night. That is what happens here in Cayman on the Friday nights. Invite as many young people as you can. Those of you who are grandmothers, who are aunts, who are uncles, grandfathers, fathers, mothers, get as many into the house of God tonight. Amen. And tomorrow the Lord's willing. And we are believing God for the move of his spirit. Amen. Um, when we close, we're going to ask Brother Louis. He's been playing so faithfully over the nights. I'm going to ask him to say the closing prayer. But let's stand. And uh, there is that beautiful song by the Gaithers. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. When he stood condemned to death. Anybody knows that song? He took my place. Now I grow and breathe in freedom. With each breath of life I take. Loved and forgiven. Back with the living. I'm just a sinner. Saved by grace. You all know it, Sister Mel Rose? Anybody know it? You want to get on the mic and just help me out? Um, don't leave me here by myself. I need some help. Amen. I'm just a sinner. Saved by grace. Saved by grace. When I stood condemned to death. When I stood condemned to death. He took my place. He, he took, took my, my place. Now I grow and breathe in freedom. Now, now I grow and breathe in freedom. With his breath.
breath of life I take. With each breath of life I Love and forgiven. Love and forgiven. Back with the living. Back with the living. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. One more time, I'm just a sinner. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Saved by grace. When I stood condemned to death. Stood condemned to death. He took my place. He took my place. Now I grow and breathe in freedom. Now I grow and breathe in freedom. With each breath of life I take. With each breath of life, loved and forgiven. I'm loved and forgiven. Loved and forgiven Back with the living oh, Back with the living I'm just a sinner saved by grace oh, I'm just a sinner Saved by Put your hands together, give God a clap offering. Thank you. And if you're saved by grace, can you say thank you, Jesus? Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Can you say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And Brother Louis, can you say the closing prayer for us? Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we just thank you, oh God. Thank you for your presence tonight. Oh, thank you for ascending upon us, oh Lord, our hearts. We pray, oh God, that further deliverance be done, oh God, in our lives. Oh, shatter our will, oh God, and let your will be done. In everything that we say and do, oh God, let it be to your glory. Tonight, we just thank you for the work that you've done in hearts and minds, oh Father, and the work that you will continue to do. Oh, we claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus in all lives, oh God. Oh Lord, we shatter the work by the blood of the Lamb. And tonight, oh God, we pray for protection as we go. Lord, go with us and circle us with your love and your mercy, oh God. Bring us back in the same. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.